Hello students, welcome to MS classes. Today we will solve ICSE 2019 maths paper. So let's start with the section A. Question 1. Solve the following in equation and write down the solution set and represent the solution on a real number line. Now the equation is where x belongs to whole number. So let's take 11x minus 4 less than 15x plus 4 and 15x plus 4 less than equal to 13x plus 14. So here if you take 4 to that side you get minus 8 that is less than 4x so that x is greater than minus 2. Similarly, take 13x to that side so that you get 2x that is equal to 10, x is less than or equal to 5. Now here you can see x is greater than minus 2 but less than or equal to 5. Therefore, x belongs to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 as x belongs to whole number. So how we can plot this on the number line? 2, 3, 4, 5. So we shared this as these are the numbers belonging to the whole number. So this is the representation of these numbers on the number line. Next question. A man invest rupees 4500 in shares of a company which is paying 7.5% dividend. If rupees 100 shares are available at a discount of 10%, find number of shares he purchases and his annual income. Now, total investment that is rupees 4500, the percentage is given 7.5 and the discount is 10%. And the face value is given rupees 100. So we can find the market value that is 100 minus 10% of 100 which is 90 rupees. And hence the number of shares can be found by using the formula that is the total investment upon the market value that gives 50 so that's the answer of first part second part we have to find the annual income so for that the formula is number of share into face value into dividend percentage divided by 100 so number of shares that is 50 face value is 100 dividend percent is 7.5 divided by 100 so after solving this we get 375. C part. In a class of 40 students, marks obtained by the students in a class test out of 10 are given below. Calculate the following for the given distribution. First, median, second, mod. So this is the required table where the marks and the number of students are mentioned. Here we have found the cumulative frequency. So here you can see N is 40. Now the first we have to find median, the formula is n by 2th plus n by 2 plus 1th divided by 2. So here n is 40, so if you replace n with 40, 40 by 2 plus 1th upon 2, so that is 20th plus 21st divided by 2. So as you can see. 20th and 21st that is line in between 15 and 25 so corresponding to this the value is 6 plus 6 by 2 which is 6 second mode so here you can see the maximum number of students is 10 and corresponding to that the marks is 6 so here the mode is 6 corresponding to the maximum number of students. 
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन यूजिंग द फैक्टर थियोरम शो दैट x माइनस टू इज अ फैक्टर ऑफ x क्यूब प्लस एक्स स्क्वायर माइनस फोर एक्स माइनस फोर हैंस फैक्टराइज द पोलिनोमियल कंप्लीट सो हेयर एफ एक्स इज गिवन एक्स क्यूब प्लस एक्स स्क्वायर माइनस फोर एक्स माइनस फोर इफ एक्स माइनस टू इज अ फैक्टर ऑफ द गिवन पोलिनोमियल सो x इज इक्वल टू टू वुड सेटिस्फाई दिस इक्वेशन सो इफ यू रिप्लेस एक्स विद टू ओवर हेयर we get 0 that means x minus 2 is a factor of the given polynomial now here if we divide this function with x minus 2 by the long division method we get the factor x square plus 3x plus 2 so if we solve this by splitting the middle term we get x minus 2 x plus 1 x plus 2 next question prove that cosecant theta minus sin theta into secant theta minus cos theta Into tan theta plus cot theta is equal to one. So here, if you take the left hand side and replace cosecant with one by sine, here secant with one by cos and tan and cot with sine by cos and cos by sine. So if you take the LCM, you get one minus sine square upon sine theta, one minus cos square theta upon cos theta, and here sine square theta plus cos square theta upon sine theta cos theta. Now one minus sine square theta is cos square theta. 1 minus cos square theta is sin square theta, and sin square plus cos square is 1. So after simplifying this, we get 1, which is our right hand side. In an arithmetic progression, the fourth and the sixth terms are 8 and 14 respectively. Find the first term, common difference, and sum of the first 20 terms. Now the fourth term is 8, and the sixth term is given as 14. As we know the formula a plus n minus one into d, that is the formula for nth term. So a plus four minus one, which is three d, that is eight, and a plus five d is fourteen. So if we solve these two equations simultaneously, we get d as three and the first term as minus one. Now the sum of the twenty terms here we use the formula n by two two a plus n minus one into d. so you do write the formula always to get the marks so if you put the values here we get 550 next question first part simplify so here as you can see if you multiply this with each and every term you get sin square a minus sin a cos a sin a cos a sin square a similarly cos square a cos a sin a Minus sine a cos a cos square a, and if you add the both sine square plus cos square, here minus sine a cos a plus cos a sine a, here sine a cos a minus cos a sine a, and here sine square plus cos square. Now sine square a plus cos square a is one. This gets cancelled, gives zero. Even this also gives zero, and this is one. So this is our simplified form. M and N are two points on the x-axis and y-axis respectively. P three comma two divides the line segment M N in the ratio two is to three. Find the coordinates of M and N and the slope of the line M N. So here you can see M and N are the two points lying on the x and y axis. So M we can assume as a comma zero, and N we can assume as zero comma b, and P is the point which is dividing the line in two is to three. Now using the section formula three. Is equal to a into three plus two into zero upon two plus three. Similarly, two is equal to zero into three plus two into b upon two plus three. So after solving this, we get a is equal to five and b is equal to five. So our points are five comma zero and zero comma five. Now the slope of the line mn can be found by using the formula y two minus y one upon x two minus x one. So here, if you replace the value of b and a with five and five, you get the slope minus one. A solid metallic sphere of radius six centimeter is melted and made into a solid cylinder of height thirty-two centimeter. Find the radius of the cylinder and the curved surface area of the cylinder. So here, that sphere is melted and recasted into a solid cylinder of height thirty-two centimeter. The radius is not given, so let's suppose the radius is r. Now, since it is melted, so the volume remains same. So, volume of sphere is four by three pi r cube, where r is six centimeter, 
and the volume of the cylinder is pi r square h where h is 32 so after simplifying this we get the radius 3 cm the curved surface area of the cylinder as we know is 2 pi r h so if you substitute the values of r and h we get the curved surface area 595.2 cm square question fourth the following numbers k plus 3 k plus 2 3k minus 7 and 2k minus 3 are in proportion find k as the four numbers are in proportion so it means we can write the ratio k plus 3 upon k plus 2 that is equal to 3k minus 7 upon 2k minus 3 so if we cross multiply this and simplify we get this equation now we can solve this by using the splitting the middle term we get k is equal to minus 1 and k is equal to 5 next solve for x the quadratic equation x square minus 4x minus 8 is equal to 0 give your answer correct to three significant figures so here if we compare this equation with the standard equation which is ax square plus bx plus c is equal to 0 so a is 1 b is minus 4 and c is minus 8 and if we apply the quadratic formula which is minus b plus minus under root b square minus 4ac upon 2a we get the two roots after putting the values and taking plus first and then minus we get the two values since we have to find the answer in three significant figures so our answer is 5.46 and the second minus 1.46 next question use ruler and compass only for answering this question draw a circle of radius 4 cm mark the center as O Mark a point P outside the circle at a distance of 7 cm from the center. Construct two tangents to the circle from the external point P. Measure and write down the length of any one tangent. As this is purely construction based question. So here as you know that how to draw the tangent. Here I have taken a point at the center of the radius 4 cm and drawn a circle. So here the second point P is given at a distance of 7 cm. So after drawing the perpendicular bisector, we draw another circle taking OM as radius. So if we join this, we get the tangent and we can measure the length PA which is 5.8 cm. In our next video, we will solve the section B. Thank you.